we are going to talk about that monopolist produces at the elastic portion of the demand curve. See, we know that monopolist is producing those kinds of goods which have no close substitutes available. And because they have no close substitutes available, there is a general tendency to think that monopolists would be producing at the inelastic portion of the demand curve. And why this is not true, let us look at that. So let's write a few lines first. Monopolies often produces goods which have no close substitutes available. Because if close substitutes would have been available, then you would have bought that only. I mean, why would this become a monopoly then? There will be many suppliers of this product. No close substitutes available. And because there are no close substitutes available for the product which the monopoly is producing, then it means it is equivalent of saying that monopolist is producing those kinds of goods which have inelastic demand, right? So, such goods have inelastic demand. Right. Uh, so the common mistake is that students, they, they think that because he's producing the goods which have an elastic demand, so it means that monopolist would also be producing at a point of uh, producing at the inelastic portion of the demand curve. That's not correct. Right. So the common misunderstanding is. common misunderstanding is that monopolist produces at inelastic portion of the demand curve. This is the common misunderstanding. <clears throat> Why this is not true, right? Uh, so what is the formula for elasticity of demand? Percentage change in quantity demanded upon percentage change in price, right? So when you say that something has inelastic demand, <clears throat> this would mean what? That the modulus of elasticity of demand is less than one, right? That would mean what? That percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage change in price, right? This would mean what? That supposedly, if you are going to increase the price a little, right, by maybe 1%, so there would be lesser reduction in the quantity demanded, right? Proportionally, less quantity reduction is going to be there. An increase in price... by 1% would entail
reduction <clears throat> in sales of less than 1%. <clears throat> reduction in sales of less than 1%. Don't you think if I was the monopolist, I have an incentive to actually increase the price because it is not reducing my quantity demanded much. You tell me, what is an easiest way to increase the revenue? If your quantity is not reducing much, you just increase the price. You're getting more revenue. So why will I stop at this point? No. Why will I stop at this point at the inelastic portion? Because at inelastic portion, by increasing the price, my quantity demanded is not reducing much. Ultimately, my revenue is increasing. So why will I stop here? I'd rather keep on increasing price, no? Right. So <clears throat> if that were the case, then monopolist monopolist would have an incentive to increase the price right A sales would not be greatly affected, right? So, is that profit maximizing? Huh? That is, uh, should I be stopping at that particular point? Because in case if I increase the price and my, my revenue is increasing, why will I stop at the inelastic portion? That is not profit maximizing at all. Right? So, monopolist, therefore, monopolist, does not <clears throat> set a price at the inelastic portion right as that would be not profit maximizing. As that would be <clears throat> not profit maximizing. But supposedly, monopolists would have set the set uh, uh, at the point of the elastic portion of the demand. So what is the uh, elasticity of demand for the elastic portion? It will be like this. <clears throat> it, it will be like this. So increase in price. An increase in price. By 1%. Right. Right. Would reduce. sales by more than 1%. No? Would reduce the sales by more than 1%. So do you uh, want to sit at this particular point? No? 
by increasing the price, your sales are reducing more than proportionally. You would not want to sit at this particular point, right? This is increased. This is reducing your revenue much. Uh, here, you do not have any incentive to increase the price further, right? Here, you do not have any, any incentive to increase the price further. So, therefore, there is no incentive to increase the price further to increase the price further so it is profit maximizing for the monopolist to sit at the elastic portion of the demand curve this is what author is trying to tell you so <clears throat> when you have uh, uh, the monopolist uh, question and you being asked that where is monopolist going to sit at the inelastic portion or at the elastic portion. He will be setting uh, the quantity demanded at the elastic portion of the demand curve. That is profit maximizing for him. Because at the elastic portion, ab uske baad in case if he is going to increase the price, the, the quantity demanded is going to fall much more than the increase in price and uh, proportionally. And hence the revenue is going to fall. So there you will sit. Achha, you have to understand one thing. So whenever you find out, let's say you find out maxima. So how do you find out maxima? You find out maxima, just say for example, for this curve, right? You find out, okay, it is increasing, 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 increasing. And then it comes at this particular point, right? And after that, it starts falling. How do you know that this is profit maximizing or anything? It is maximizing. You know, because after this point, it has started falling. So similarly here, at the inelastic portion, you have an incentive to increase the price further because it is still increasing your revenue. Uh, but at the elastic portion, if you increase the price, your revenue is going to fall. So it is not profit maximizing to increase the price, uh, sorry, to, to sit or to stop at the point where you have inelastic portion, but it is profit maximizing, but okay, to sit at the elastic portion of the demand curve. Bas. Uske baad you should not be increasing the price. That is the point. Huh? That is the point. So let us say you have the market demand function as PQ equals to 10 minus Q. And uh, the marginal cost function is just C equals to 4. So we will find out at the profit maximizing equilibrium, where, I mean, is that at the elastic portion or at the inelastic portion of the demand curve? Let's have a look at that. So what is TR? 10 minus Q into Q. So that is 10 Q minus Q square. What is MR? 10 minus 2 Q. What is MC? 4. So 10 minus 2 Q equals to 4. So 6 is equal to 2 Q. Your Q is equal to 3. And what is P equals to? <clears throat> N minus 3 equals to 7. <clears throat> so Q comes out to be 3 and P comes out to be 7. <clears throat> so, and you write your demand function as Q is equal to 10 minus P. And you write DQ by DP, which is minus 1. What is the elasticity of demand? DQ by DP into P by Q. So that is going to be minus 1 into or uh, P by Q. P is what? 7. Q is what? 3. So it is uh, 2.66 modulus. Right? Veseto, it will be minus, sorry, 2.33. So what is this going to be equal to? It's 2.33. And uh, so in modulus, it will come out to be 2.33. So it is monopolist is operating at the in elastic portion of the demand curve. This is greater than one now. So at the profit maximizing output, he is operating at the elastic portion of the demand curve. Right? 
elastic portion of the demand curve. Everyone, 